My weird school. Fast facts. Dinosaurs, dodos, and woolly mammoths. Written by Dan Gutman. Pictures by Jim Pilot. Chapter Five. Dinosaur doozies. In eighteen forty nine, a little dinosaur called Hypsilophodon was discovered on an island off the coast of England. Paleontologists decided that Hypsilophodon lived in cheese, like a large squirrel. It wasn't until one hundred twenty five years later. That a careful study of Hypsilophodon's bones showed it had about as much chance of being able to climb a tree as an elephant did. Scientists are only human, and humans make mistakes. In this chapter, we're going to talk about some dinosaur bloopers and blunders. But don't feel too badly about the scientists who made these bone-headed mistakes. Who knows? Maybe a hundred years from now, the scientists of the future will figure out that everything we think today is completely wrong. Why would a dinosaur have its nose on the top of its head? There can only be one reason, right? It must have lived underwater and could pop its head up to the surface so it could breathe, sort of like a snorkel. Duh, it's so obvious. There's only one problem. That was dead wrong. For many years, everybody thought Brachiosaurus, with its forty-foot neck, lived in the sea. But now we know that any dinosaur that big would suffocate if it went underwater. Now paleontologists believe Brachiosaurus was a land dweller. In 1923, the fossil of a new dinosaur was discovered. The interesting thing was that on the ground, four inches from its skull, were a bunch of eggs from another dinosaur, Protoceratops. Scientists concluded that the newly discovered dinosaur stole the eggs of the Protoceratops. The new dinosaur was named Oviraptor, which means egg robber in Latin. For years after that, Oviraptor was described in museums and books as a no good, underhanded, devious, not very nice egg wrangler who would steal the eggs of other dinosaurs and eat them. So it would poach their eggs. Get it? Poached eggs. Very funny, Arlo. The truth is that the eggs that were four inches from the Oviraptor were later found to be Oviraptor eggs. So the Oviraptor was just protecting its own eggs. It didn't steal them. Wow! If I was an Oviraptor, I would get a lawyer and sue somebody. Back in the eighteen hundreds, one of the first dinosaurs to be discovered and named was Iguanodon. It was a plant eater that walked on two legs. The bones were brought to a local doctor named Gideon Mantle, so he could examine them. Mantle thought the skeleton would be like a giant version of the rhinoceros iguana, which has a horn. So he put the thumb at the end of its snout. What a thumbhead! So everybody thought Iguanodon had this thing sticking out of its face, sort of like the horn of a rhinoceros. It took decades before scientists realized that the thumb was a thumb. Kids are gonna love this one. When Stegosaurus was discovered in eighteen seventy six, scientists didn't know what to make of it. It was a huge animal, but it had a brain about the size of a bird's brain. They couldn't figure out how such a big thing could be controlled by such a small brain. A paleontologist named Othniel C. Marsh came up with a theory to explain it. He said Stegosaurus must have had two brains, and get this: one of the brains was in its head. 
and the other brain was in its butt. Yes, you heard that right. Marsh believed that the brain in Stegosaurus's head controlled the front of its body, and its butt brain controlled the back of its body. Who? That's a good one. I think that if anybody had a brain in his butt, it was Othniel C. Marsh. Speaking of butt brains, I think this would be the perfect time to talk about dinosaur poop. Over the years, Arlo, we're not going to talk about dinosaur poop. You promised. Okay, okay, chill. I won't talk about dinosaur poop. Sometimes human beings don't just make mistakes. They lie, they cheat, they steal. They do it for money, for fame, or for other reasons. In 1999, the National Geographic Society announced an amazing find. A half dinosaur, half bird skeleton that was the long sought missing link between meat-eating dinosaurs and modern birds. It was named Archaeoraptor. The skeleton had been dug up in China by an adventurer there. Well, guess what? It turned out that Archaeoraptor was actually a fake that had been glued together from pieces of unrelated fossils. Oops. After that, people called Archaeoraptor the Piltdown Chicken. In 1845, a fossil hunter named Albert C. Koch rented a theater in New York City and charged people a quarter to see a giant fossil skeleton of a sea serpent he named Hydrachos. It was billed as ruler of the waters. Koch claimed he found the skeleton in Alabama and people flocked to see it. Unfortunately for Coke, real scientists looked at Hydrachos and declared it was a fake that had been made out of ammonite shells and at least six separate prehistoric whale skeletons. Busted. That brings us to the great bone wars. Bone wars? What's that? Bones had wars against each other? That must have been weird. No, the Great Bone Wars was a war between two rival paleontologists, Edward Drinker Cope and Othniel C. Marsh. Wait, wasn't Marsh the guy who thought Stegosaurus had a brain in his butt? Yup, Cope and Marsh were famous in the late 1800s. Between them, the two men led to the discovery of over 130 species of dinosaurs. But they hated each other. It all started in 1868, when Marsh bribed some of Cope's hired workers to send whatever bones they found directly to Marsh. Then, in 1870, Marsh ridiculed Cope in the scientific press after it was discovered that Cope had mistakenly put the skull of an Elasmosaurus skeleton on its tail in his official reconstruction. After that, the two men became enemies for life. When Marsh's crew would finish digging up a bed of fossils, Cope's crew would go to the same location and search for more. After they dug up all the fossils they could find from a site, Cope's men would dynamite the site to prevent Marsh's men from searching the area. Cope named one fossil he found Jagged-Toothed Cope Hater because of all the Cope Haters who surrounded him. The two men were constantly spying on each other, accusing each other of stealing their work. While Cope's rush to work led to careless errors, Marsh would sometimes resort to bribery or bullying to make Cope look bad. They hated each other so much that the Great Bone Wars continued after Cope and Marsh died. Cope suggested that both of their brains should be weighed to see which one was the heaviest. He was sure that his brain was heavier and that he was smarter than Marsh. <laughs>